This week's Torah portion is Parshat Bo. It has within it the, two of, the last two of the ten plagues. If you remember from your Passover seders as we dip wine out of our Kiddush cup, these last two plagues are Hoshech, and, which is darkness, and the slaying of the firstborn. And if the plagues are a, a continuum, a growing in severity, from the first to the last, then plague number nine, darkness, is somehow just one step below the severity of the slaying, the death of the first. And so our rabbis ask, and we ask as we hear this, what is so bad about darkness? I mean, yes, when we're children and maybe sometimes as adults, we fear the dark. But clearly that can't be as dramatic and as severe and as dangerous as deadly, as devastating, as the slang of the firstborn. What is so bad about darkness? We read in Torah, And Moses stretched forth his hand toward the heavens, and there was a thick darkness in all of the land of Egypt for three days. They could not see one another. Neither did they rise anyone from his place. The Gur Rebbe, Rabbi Yitzhak Meir of Gur, observed, commenting on this verse, that the greatest darkness exists when we can't see the pain of others, when we can't see the other and appreciate what they are going through. The darkness that existed during this plague was not a fear of the dark. It was an incredible isolation, an aloneness for three days, not only alone with ourselves, but alone with our pain or others with their pain, and no one came to help them. No one came to comfort them. No one came to put a hand, an arm around a shoulder and to reassure and say it would be okay. The, the pain and the, the, the trouble and the turmoil of this plague was that we were blind and indifferent to the suffering of others. And I can think of maybe only one thing worse. If we never see the need in the first place, then we won't move. No person will get up from his place. We won't lift a finger to help. Maya, in her choosing to have her bat mitzvah in Israel, And the observations that she shared with us tonight about the incredible complexity and the contrasts that exist in Israel. She shined a light on a darkness that we all have and feel, or at least a darkness that we experience. We may not even know that we're feeling it. A darkness that is unavoidable being here in the diaspora. Why go to Israel for your bat mitzvah? Why go on a birthright trip? Why go to volunteer for Tzachal, for the IF, or on a kibbutz? Why take your family and go and have your experience, your vacation there of all places? Because you cannot see Israel from here. Because we are in darkness here. You can't see, as Maya saw, the complexity and the challenges of everyday life on CNN or the CBC, or read it in the pages of the New York Times or Haaretz or the Globe and Mail. You have to go as Maya did, as so many of you have done. And you have to walk a street and worry about the person walking towards you. Do they mean you harm? You have to live as Israelis in the South do, knowing that you have 15 seconds to get from the shower to a bunker if rockets come out of Gaza as they so often do more than is ever reported here. You have to go there and experience what it is like to be a Jew in that land and the challenges of practicing your modern and progressive Judaism in that land. Not only challenges that you feel as a North American Jew, but that Israelis feel today 
in the struggle between the Rabbanut, the organized government sponsored religious authority, and the religion of the street and of every day and of secular Israelis that are not so secular anymore. And an Israel that is anguishing over what they are and what they value and what they will become and what the settlements mean and how to, how to deal with that problem and how to deal with the people that are embroiled in that problem. You have to go there to see it. Like so many things, you have to go to the source. You have to lift the veil. You have to shine a light to really see and understand, to peel back the darkness. We don't say, or we say, I should say, that you have to judge a person, you can't judge a person until you have stood in their shoes. We don't say that because you have to feel what their feet feel like. We don't say that because of your feet. We say it because of their eyes and yours. Not to judge another person until you have stood in their shoes because you have to see the world from their perspective. And if you want to stand in the shoes of an Israeli, you have to go to Israel and see what they see all around them. And that's what Maya did. But it's not only true for Maya. It's not only true for Israel. It's true in all the dark corners of our lives, the places where we struggle to see. We, we are plagued by darkness, the same plague of this week's Torah portion. We are plagued by darkness and isolation, and we are so often alone and unaware. As parents, there is a darkness about what is going on with our children. Because it's very hard to stand in their shoes when they don't fit our feet, but to even get their perspective. We can try to kneel down and see the world from their perspective, but everything is huge around them. And they so often feel small. And we forget that because the darkness covers over us and we, we forget to see the world in the way that they see it. And as employers and employees, we are in darkness. As employers and employees, we are in darkness. We seldom see or appreciate the whole picture and the impact of what's going on in the world on them. The rise in food costs, the falling of the dollar, the, 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 the challenges of living in this incredibly expensive city. And sometimes in the midst of our darkness and isolation, we think only of how these things impact us, but what about those that don't have as much of us, as us? What about those that are dependent upon us to provide for their families? And as employees, to think about the stresses our employer, sometimes we think it is the darkness of a corporation, but somewhere in there is a person who may be oblivious to what we are experiencing, but they are experiencing the stresses and the challenges too. If you read the paper yesterday or today, I forget what it was, about food costs, if you read the Vancouver Sun, the challenges that independent restaurant owners are having with the rising cost of food and how just to, to make and change their menu so that they can still, in a business that has such slim margins, still provide for themselves and all their employees that are counting on them. But we go to restaurants and we're in darkness. And we complain because this is costing more than it did last week. And we're in darkness, perhaps most of all, in our own relationships. Could there be nothing more painful to be in a relationship with another person and feel like you're not seen? To feel like there is a darkness that envelops you because in order for that other person to see you, they have to acknowledge that maybe they say, play some part in your pain, in your challenges, and that to acknowledge it would mean that they we would have to take some responsibility for it and maybe even try to fix it. But we are in intentional darkness there. We don't want to look because we don't want to see. I don't miss a lot of things about the old country, and by that I mean the United States where I lived forever. But one or two of the things that I have been thinking about a lot lately is as much as the United States struggles with its race relations, this incredibly proud and honorable tradition that was brought to us by Martin Luther King Jr., whose birthday we 
the world, I hope, the United States will celebrate this weekend. And I didn't live during Martin Luther King's lifetime, but he is as close to a living prophet as I've ever experienced in my life, and his words ring so true. And speaking on this very topic, Martin Luther King said, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. And hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Maya's journey to understanding, Maya's journey to Israel and understanding Israel and our journey to understanding each other begins with that same first step. You have to go there. You have to stand in those shoes and look through those eyes and see that perspective. You have to shine a light. A man once asked a rabbi, Rabbi, if I am in a darkened world, how do I bring light? And the rabbi said, if you are in a darkened world, it is like being in a darkened room, and all you have to do is strike a match to shine the light. You shine the light so that you can see, not only with your eyes, but you shine a light on your relationships, your employers, your employees, on Israel, on your children, so you can see with your heart as well. May this be a time of light, not of darkness. Our service continues, page 586, we rise for Olenu.